Well, we got all the heavy hitters in the building. I really, really hope that StreamYards cooperates tonight <laughs> because they hate me at StreamYards. <laughs> Happy Friday, ladies. What is going on here? Uh, who we got? We got Melissa Kano here. Conservative Cutie is here. VN Training is here. June's Brown Wife. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We got Caramel Mocha in here. Mother Cura is up in this bitch, right? Who else? Let me see. Eleven's here. Courtney's here. I mean, y'all in the building. Listen, ladies, I'm going behind the wall for a little bit. You know I'll be back. But, you know, every time I get that feeling, you know, that it's time for just to, to be able to say some shit I can't say up here, right? It's time to do so. Um, but, of course, I'll be back. And... The ones that's rocking with me, I'll, I'll see y'all, of course, for movie night, right? And then I'll see y'all in Discord and all these different places. But I just won't be on YouTube. YouTube is eh, it's a little restrictive and it's a it's a hot mess on these streets. Y'all <laughs> y'all got some shit going on out here. I wish I could talk about it up here. Um, I see y'all little mermaid is pregnant, right? <laughs> I see y'all little mermaid don't let a nigga knock her up and... Uh, basically got her out here looking crazy these folks out here talking about the video music awards and all this shit and y'all content creators getting you know feeling away because that life that the the unicorn or myrmicorn or or whatever the fuck she is mermaid is up here um 
doing some things she shouldn't be doing. And it kind of looks like somebody else's life out here. But I'm going to tell y'all this. Y'all better get y'all shit together. Life is real, ladies. It's real. Okay. And ain't nobody playing with you. Life itself is not playing with you. I want y'all to know that everything that you do, everything, including your content creators, they have to live that life for the choices that they made. You have, you're, you're going to be the only one there to deal with it. Okay. And especially if you're dealing with black males, it's just going to be you. He's not going to have to deal with it. He's going to move on in one way or another, maybe with another black woman, right? You got your new baby. It's just you. Maybe with a white woman. <laughs> maybe he's going to jail. Maybe somebody going to blow his head off. I don't fucking know. But what I do know is you don't want a piece of that shit. I just wanted to tell you that because I won't see y'all for a minute. But y'all, don't let loneliness, don't let second guessing yourself, don't, don't fuck yourself over. I won't be able to clean it up for you and nobody here will be able to do so. Nobody in the other sectors will be able to do so. Okay. When you turn off your device, throw it on a charger to get you some sleep. It's going to be you. That's your life. Take everything that you've seen, everything that you've seen proven, right? Folks have receipts for, or you witnessed in your own personal life with people that's in your life, people around you, all that shit. You better believe what your eyes are telling you. Because nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to have to deal with that but you, but you. I'm going to be home, okay? I'm going to be living my life, the same life I've been living for decades, decades. It's very, very comfortable, okay? And I feel for you, ladies. I really, really do. But you got to stop believing all this nonsense that you hear in these hotep areas, in these areas where bitches are still wanting black men, but trashing black men at the same time. It's a very sick thing to see, okay? And the only way that you're going to be able to get yourself together is if you're honest with yourself and what you want and actually how much you love yourself, okay? It ain't always about mating with some goddamn body. Fuck them, right? When you divest, it's for you and you only. If you have children... You're going to have to make part of that for your kids because they're your responsibility. You had them. But it ain't about uh, impressing no man. It ain't about trying to see who looked the best, uh, you know, whose makeup is, you know, what them hoes say, slayed and all. Fuck all of that shit. Get away from Blackistan. I'm getting ready to expose another lie that keeps some of you bitches mewling. Okay. Ladies, I know that in the, in the past, in this country, America, there's been some issues, right? There has been some issues. And there's been issues with race, race relations and all that shit. But all of it, it there, there's so many different parts to it, it's unreal. You cannot just simply say white people hate black people. Therefore, everything that happens to black people or with black people is because of white people. That is, that's childish. It's childish. At some point in your life, you're responsible for yourself. <laughs> no matter who don't like you do you think i'm getting ready to sit up and mope in my house because a bitch don't like me i don't give a fuck and that's how black people were supposed to be about who didn't like them but they're playing into these stereotypes moping being victims and you going down with that ship you're actually the sacrifice for that ship okay i got a little motherly up here i apologize but i want what's best for you and black folk ain't they not what's best for you so let's bust some bubbles tonight. Take a look at your screen. I hate these type of bitches. I really do. These red, black, and green flags. This, this, this live tonight, is, it's not about them. I promise you, it's not. But all these women up here on this uh, screen, they've been lied to. They've been lied to. They bought the victim narrative that black folk was just some sweet church-going people and, and white folk just won't let them get ahead. OK, if any one of these women that you see on your screen got hurt standing there with their red, black and green flag, they would immediately need white people. So do you know how goofy you look doing this shit? Hmm? You know how goofy you look? You fist pumping, pussy popping. And then if you break your ankle coming down those stairs at that building, that nigga behind her with that scarf on his face, he's not going to be able to fix it. The people she's protesting against is going to have to fix it. Ladies, here come the lie. This here. And I want the smoke. 
Because we fixed to tell you what actually happened that day. Okay? Let me tell you something. I know a lot of y'all already knew this started with a black man trying to get some white pussy. You already knew that. I, at least I hope you knew it. If you didn't know that, you're getting ready to get your heart broke tonight. Okay? The story goes as follows. The black version. Well, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in 1921, they was just fucking amazing. Their black neighborhood, which was called Black Wall Street, that ain't the name of it, by the way, but anyway, we'll get there. Their neighborhood had movie theaters, pharmacies, pharmacies. They, they had everything, good schools, and da-da-da-da. Y'all, then all of a sudden, the white people in Tulsa got jealous of them because they were doing so fucking well. So they came, made up a narrative, and just tore the neighborhood down, okay? Therefore, since they tore up successful black people's stuff, um, why build anything? This, is, this story here is just an excuse for black men not to have to build anything. I want to tell you that straight up, okay? Why build something? Because if I do, white men are just going to come tear it up. Well, there's a little bit more to this story here, all right? Ladies, this was Black Wall Street back in the day, okay? First of all, this place was not called Black Wall Street. The place was called Little Africa, okay? That's what the fuck it was called. It was changed to Black Wall Street in order to get your ass in, in a way. Here's the deal. These black folk were no more successful than the people, white people, that lived around them. Pull up, first bubble busted. Nobody was jealous of them. As a matter of fact, Black Wall Street, a.k.a. Little Africa, right? They got a lot of their money and became middle class because right before those years in 1915, the oil boom started, right? In 1915, oil became a big thing. These black folk that you see in this neighborhood right here, they got their wealth from white people discovering oil and implementing it into their oil boom. Huh? They got their shit from these people that they claimed that were jealous of them. Let's keep going. Everybody was pretty much successful. Everybody had, they, they, they spent their money in their community. I'll give them that. But you forget. <laughs> There's always a problem. Your men hate your guts. They absolutely do. And as long as this, white women, right, on the screen, as long as they exist, and they always will, you, madams, are gonna, you, you're going to have problems with your, with your so-called rich neighborhood, okay? The neighborhood was not rich, by the way. They did what white people were doing, and everybody was what y'all grand god daddy used to say, average at best, huh? Okay, well, since the white girl, 17, her name was Sarah Page, right? She, she's an elevator operator. You know, back then you had to have somebody operate the elevator, pull it up, pull it down. It didn't have buttons like we do today. Well, there was this little boy, black dude, dusty, 19 year old. OK, his name was Dick Rowland and he felt like fucking around today. He felt like fucking around. Ladies, he went into that elevator where this little girl was and he went ahead and tried to sexually take advantage of her against her will. I have to keep it clean up here, okay? Went in that elevator, the doors closed behind him, and everybody in the building heard her screaming. Do you think she was screaming because he was fine? She was screaming because he put his hands on her, okay? Uh, Dick Rowland, whose nickname was Diamond Dick, I'm not fucking around here. That nigga's name was Diamond Dick. And I can't, I, I can't, I, I can't. Anyway, he told the police his name was Diamond Dick. He didn't say his name was Dick Rowland, okay? He said, my name Diamond Dick. <laughs> and they went on ahead and arrested him. Now, the story gets a little bit more juicy. And ladies on the panel, if you need to step in, if you got something to add, let me know, because I know I'm Mike Hogan right now. So just, you know. So Diamond Dick, he's in custody, okay? Let's keep going. So black folk thought, hey, they got Diamond Dick in custody. And I know good and well, the white folks going to try and lynch him. So let's get our guns and go up to the courthouse. That's what they did. That's what they did. Because they believed, probably rightfully so, that uh, the white folks around the courthouse was going to hang Diamond Dick. 
for touching a white woman. That was quite possible. I'll give them that. But what they did was they went up to the courthouse with their guns. Ladies, were you aware that the first shot fired was shot by a black man? Pull up. So what started it was a scuffle with a black man's gun who ended, ended up firing and it hit a white person. Now it's on and popping. Okay. This is where it got a little bit funky. All right. Let me tell y'all something. They told y'all, there's little Africa. You can see where my little red dot is. It was little Africa. There was no such thing as Black Wall Street. It turned into Black Wall Street and was called Black Wall Street for political gain and to give black men a reason not to build. I'm just keeping it real with you. And you know that uh, black men are white men's little boys. So whatever they had, little Africa wasn't good enough. They want to show you that they can do everything that white men do, which they can't. It's also part of the reason why Sarah Page was attacked in that elevator, but we can't go there up here. It is what it is. All right. So that's what started all of this shit. And the first swing was taken by black folk. Here's the deal. It didn't turn into like, it, let me just show y'all this picture real quick. Okay. DZ, why did they tear up this? If it, if it was just a little argument or whatever, why did, why did they tear up the neighborhood? The same reason you bust your uh, baby daddy's tires out of his car. The car ain't have shit to do with it, but you was pissed with him because he was in there rocking the cheeks of another bitch and you got jealous, right? And you had to hit the car like the car was fucking somebody. Yeah, so white folks and black folks was fighting, so they fucked up their shit, Okay. This is the real story, goddammit. This is the real tea. And the only reason I'm telling y'all this shit tonight is because you need to stop muling. You're muling because of a lie. You're muling up under something that doesn't even exist. Hell, Black Wall Street didn't exist until it got burned the fuck down. Pull up. They claim that one of their uh, civil rights leaders or whatever named it Black Wall Street, but the place was called Little Africa until the, the, the shit jumped off. Let's keep going because there's more lies being told about this so-called Black Wall Street situation. All right. They told y'all that anywhere from 300 to 3000 black folks died that day. That's a goddamn lie. Even back then, they only estimated it to be around 100. OK, this is the shit I'm telling you. They're telling you all this exaggerated bullshit to keep you fighting. And goddamn, it worked like a charm. You are busting your ass out here for a group of people that can't stand you. Okay, let's keep going. Because this don't make no damn sense. I get sick of this shit. And y'all, the Tulsa situation is not the only lies you've been told. We this, this is just the subject tonight. Okay, this is an article from USA Today. Y'all, those riots were greatly exaggerated. I'm going to tell you something that's going to piss you off. There were only approximately 36 people killed that day, verified. Ten of them were white. Have you ever heard that part? Yeah, that's because they were fighting each other. And it had nothing to do with the fact that, you know, black folks were successful. How the fuck are you going to be jealous of somebody's success when you gave them their success? How the fuck are you working at their oil rigs and shit like that? And that's where your money came from. But somehow they jealous of the people that they're giving money to. That's really, really weird. Aaliyah, before I go on, you got anything? Oh, yeah. We're here to piss more Black people off tonight. So, goody. I mean, so a couple <laughs> things. <laughs> I got a couple things because I know we won't be back for a while. First of all, about the Little Mermaid thing. All I got to say about that is, I guess Miss Hallie has now earned her black card back, given her current situation, because you know that's all it takes. They don't like you when you're doing right. So I guarantee you, she has earned her. Her sister Chloe already earned hers back when she started shaking her ass and dancing and twerking and acting like a thought. As long as they were nice, lovely, respectable young women nobody cared all that much <laughs> okay so now you know you have to act a certain way you have to do certain things so i'm sure now she's successfully earned her black card now moving on all i gotta say is my 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 what a tangle well we we when first we practice to deceive and i'm so glad when we get to discuss the distorted historical facts 
told by historical revisionists. And this isn't even a month of February. We're here to provide you with the real black history all month. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. And who says that we don't have any creativity? Oh, the people who only talk about celebrities all day. Nice. So we're here for the real deal, which is that black folks have been lying to other black folks about our history since the transatlantic slave trade. And they're still lying to this day because lies by omission are still lies. And we told y'all time and time again that no story is complete without the white man being the barbaric victim. The black woman being the, being the angry aggressor of some sort and the poor misunderstood black man being the victim. So when the truth is the white man came, he saw, he conquered, the black man either actively participated or he forfeited his balls and surrendered. That's usually how these stories go. And the black man has been taking his failures out on black women ever since. And I think that's really closer to the truth, my friends. Your men lost. You lost. Now, the question we've always asked is, since this is such a huge era of Black history that shows Black people were doing so well and thriving, if they built it once, why couldn't they just do what the Chinese did when Chinatown was destroyed and rebuild it again? At any rate, I'm glad that there will be no breadcrumbs for the pigeons tonight. And to be honest, there won't be much for you scarecrows to get moving forward. Listen, y'all, it, it, here's the thing. This story gets worse. Oh, if your yoni egg got hot about what was just said earlier, it's getting ready to get warm. You might want to remove it and set it on your nightstand. Spray that shit with a little bit of disinfectant and set it down because since you're still fucking around with Negroes, I know good and well, that egg is hot. The yolk is solidified in that motherfucker. Pull up. So here's the deal, y'all. Black people told you that after that riot that race riot because white folks were so jealous of them that that's when black wall street disappeared. Nobody helped rebuild. They, they couldn't rebuild because they didn't want, you know, white folks to come tear it down again. That's a whole goddamn lie. Okay. Even the professor. Okay. Yoni eggs. Here you go. Um, Y'all's professor over there at Texas A&M university, Mr. Albert Broussard, who had a little bit of what you like to call melanin in his skin. Oh, he said they was lying as well. Those graves that y'all keep looking for, good job because y'all finding bodies, but y'all ended up solving crimes from the 1990s. Those bodies did not come from the goddamn Tulsa situation because the fact of the matter is you exaggerated. Huh? Let's keep going. There's your, there's your professor. You ain't quoting his stupid ass, right? But you will quote one of those old ass motherfuckers that's telling you that you a victim. I see you. I see you. But let's keep going. Uh, DZ, real quick, did you see that book on the shelf behind him? Did you what see what it said? Right hand side, up there, the Black Count, Black <laughs> Masters. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna let you finish because I'm gonna empty the clip on this shit. <laughs> Listen, ladies, you've been lied to. You have. There are a lot of Black slave masters, but we won't go there tonight, cause baby, it just is what it is. Stop muling, please. Now, let's get to it. The biggest lie of all. Nobody helped us rebuild. They came and tore up our shit because they were jealous of white supremacy and racism. Da -da -da. Well, that right there is Maurice Willows. There you go. Another piece of history. Why some of your cousins named Maurice. <laughs> that ain't no black name, bitch. This motherfucker is from Canada. He wasn't there at the race riots, but guess what? He did work for the American Red Cross, and he felt sorry for you. The American Red Cross originally was to help folks that was victims of tornadoes and hurricanes, natural disasters. Pull up. But because you got your ass whooped so bad, Maurice said, you know, <laughs> can we make an exception? He went to his bosses and was like, would you take a look at that shit there? Can we please help them? And it got approved. It got approved. So the Red Cross, after the Tulsa situation, came out and helped y'all with food, shelter, medical needs, temporary schools. Uh, what? I'm sorry. I can't hear you. I thought they came, lied on the nigga because everybody think white. I won't, ooh, you can't say that up here. And they just got so jealous because y'all was doing so well with the money that they gave you. I, I, what happened? Oh, I didn't get that part of the story where the Red Cross actually did come in and help. 
You motherfuckers are lying. And the only reason that they're lying, ladies, so you can do what you're doing today. Fight with other black women about, well, we, we, you, you, it, white men do it too. Yeah, they do do it too. They come help rebuild. That's just part of their sexy nature. How about that part? Anyway, mm. so yeah. 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 Mm. So, <laughs> go ahead, honey, because I know you got something to say because I'm getting ready to expose. Okay. <laughs> See, I knew this. I just did not know about the Red Cross coming in. That part. Okay. Ebony they, here's the thing. All that fucked up history, revisionist history, that stuff came out strong in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and in the 80s, everybody was naming their little black boys some Arabic name. Mm -hmm. Hakeem, Rahim, whatever. <laughs> um, no, it was the revisionist history. Some churches were founded on this re revisionist history stuff. Mm -hmm. And my problem, the narrative never, even when I was a girl and I mean, you know, grew up hearing it, the narrative made no damn sense to me. So if you all so great, why didn't you, why weren't you great again? Why can't you build Wall Street elsewhere? Why can't you, you, you see what I'm saying? And then when you found out the real truth, oh, that was inconvenient. Yeah, Ebony, they haven't heard anything yet. Believe it or not, ladies, <clears throat> The story is going to get worse, if you can even imagine. Let's go. Because, I look, I knew when you saw hospital, you was going to bust up out that goddamn microphone. Okay, they did hospitals, right? It included a surgical ward. You don't see all them niggas in that bed? That's after the Tulsa riots. That's white folks helping black men mend. I want you to hate my guts. Let's oh. keep going. Oh, what's up? What about the medical racism? Remember all this um, medical racism that um, they've been talking okay. about? Are we? Are we? Are you getting there next? Oh, oh getting... we we getting everywhere tonight because I like I said I won't see y'all for a little while, so we need to talk about it because I'm tired of all of this whole teppy. White men are racist. Those bitches are bad winches. No, motherfucker, black men are the real bad winches, whore. That's who they sniff up under all the goddamn time. Let's go. Okay. Oh, my bad. I was early. Okay. Let me let me fall back. Let, let's keep going. Shit. If I skip it, you you, you bring it up. Um, Is this why they call them boy? Because <laughs> they they son. <laughs> uh, they left the place in rubbles and everybody was homeless. 15,000 people were homeless. They sure were. They lost their homes in that goddamn race riot. The Red Cross gave temporary housing. There's a picture of one of them and they built thousands of them for those people. Right? Here's the thing. When they told you that black folks was amazing back then, you would have thought that they went on ahead and built from there after the Red Cross came. But it didn't happen, right? It didn't happen. Fast forward. <laughs> Fast forward. That woman right there is from Tulsa, and that's her husband, okay? I'm telling you all of this because it's leading to this. Ladies, that lady right there was so touched by how how devastating the racial riots was in 2000, I'm sorry, 1921, that she went on ahead and said, we get ready to rebuild Black Wall Street. Let's do it right away. We need to preserve our history and show these white folks we are, we are amazing still. So she became the uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce of Black Wall Street. Yes, ma'am. She got busy. She's doing what I'm asking y'all not to do because it's the men's job to build that community. And if they never build that community, oh, fucking well. Well, let's see where the fuck that went, shall we? Hmm. Oh, that's right. While she was building Black Wall Street back up, her husband killed her. Pull up on me. I would love no. to. This is why when y'all see that link in that chat, it is not hit by anybody that want any smoke. We get bitches that tell us they light skin because you don't want this type of smoke. She was on her way because she drunk the tea. She drunk that goddamn Kool-Aid and she sat up there and said she want her history back because she was told the first version of that story that I told you at the beginning. She believed in black folk. But here's the deal. Not only that, Y'all, you know you can't say the S word up here. So when my great-grandmother on my father's side, when people took themselves off the planet, she used to call it they committed sideways. <laughs> she was funny. Anyway, 
this was a murder sideways, okay? He's no longer uh, on this planet either. Um, it took him a couple of days to die because they can't do nothing, right? Even take themselves off the planet. Huh? I don't want you to end up like this woman. I'm sure she was kind, gentle, and all that, very ambitious. But loving black people and believing the bullshit, she's gone. He blew her fucking head off. All right? Let's go. What you got, Mrs. Rowe? <laughs> Good evening, ladies. Good evening, beautiful, divested women. How are you? I'm great. And you cloud watching bitches uh, prepare for liftoff because I'm about to piss y'all off some more. So be it Rosewood, Lake Lanier, or the Tulsa incident, because I I refuse to call it a riot anymore. We're going to call that motherfucker an incident. What is the key catalyst? What is the catalyst for all that? Black men's lust for white women. They didn't even give a fuck about your safety enough to keep them di their dicks to themselves. Motherfucker walk around calling himself Diamond Dick. And we supposed to take this Negro seriously. I think the fuck not. That's number one. Number two, Aaliyah, I'm so glad you brought up that earlier point about the Chinese rebuilding. Because you know who else had to rebuild themselves? The Italians. Did y'all know on March 14th, 1891, I believe it was, 11 Italians were lynched in New Orleans because they were accused of unaliving the, I believe it was a, the sh chief of police or some sh shit like that. I can't remember exactly who he was, but these people were not guilty and they were lynched. And you know what the Italians did? They insulated and rebuilt. They cut down their people. They grieved, they mourned, and they kept moving forward. They kept pushing. They kept rebuilding. The same thing everybody else has done. The Koreans have done it. The Chinese have done it. The Italians have done it. The Germans did it. The Polish did it. The J people did it. Everybody did it, and they didn't need help. They just learned they had to rely on themselves. Now, Black women, I have said this before. I'm going to keep saying it. You don't have allies. You are your ally. You cannot afford to be race first because your men run to you for protection. So my question, I, I, my aunt used to say something along the lines that black women weren't taught boundaries or self-love. They were taught endurance. You were taught to simply endure and just take everything at face value. Let's be forget the motherfucking Black Panthers. Let me piss y'all off about that because one of y'all heroes of, of that little Black Panther party y'all had going on, that motherfucker was a serial rapist and would brag about it. Martin Luther the King was a serial philanderer. A lot of your civil rights leaders was out here fucking each other, fucking on white men or fucking on white bitches and white men at the same time. So we're going to stop this nonsense and this bullshit y'all trying to sell. Last point. Um, if you see somebody with my profile picture, that is not me. That ain't Mistress Rogue. If you see, especially if they pro black, as Snapple <laughs> says, that most definitely is not me. Number one, I don't do shit like that in my profile ain't like that. Number two, I don't appreciate the bitches out there who are trying to hijack it. And it ain't just me. It's everybody on the panel. Anybody that's over here for some reason, y'all bitches want to hijack who we are, but you don't want to take it all the way. All of y'all can suck an elephant's dick. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Oh, Mr. Shaw, before you move on right quick, um, who was that um, lady that was so admired by Dr. King? Because I've heard there's some debate over on Twitter that, where people are saying, well, who was all these white women that he was allegedly sleeping oh, with? Oh, her Never. name was Betty. Betty. Oh, really? How really? appropriate. Betty was a motherfucking lunch lady. We gonna forget that? Oh, let's not forget that Frederick Douglass left his wife for two years on a speaking cir uh, circuit to take his ass through Europe and smash a bunch of white bitches too. So there's another bubble that's getting popped tonight. You know, I guess I'm, I'm just baffled a little bit about how people wanted to disagree with that when J. Edgar Hoover had him on tape doing it. I'm like, seriously? And this sent it to his wife. Don't forget Ser that part. <laughs> sent it to his like, wife. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. seriously? Don't that. I'm telling you, that's keeping y'all mewling for no reason. After this live stream, I want to see some smoke. I want you to see, I, I, I want you to try to debunk this shit because you're running out of reasons to mule. At the oh. end of the day, it's going to be you muling just because you a stupid ass bitch at the end of the day. Because there's no reward in it and there's nothing that you're getting revenge for. There's nothing to fight for. All of this shit was lies. Go ahead, Ebony. Okay. Another thing about those lovely Black Panthers and uh, Stokely Carmichael and all those people, they loved them some white women. Oh, yeah. And what they did was they had... <laughs> black women stand at the door while they're mm -hmm. doing the white women 
<laughs> yeah. They okay. Were thank you, Angela freaking Davis. Thank you so freaking much. That's what you did. Yeah. She stood at the door while black men were back there fucking white women to make sure nobody came and interrupted that. Oh, thank you. Did y'all forget uh, Shaka Khan? Mother oh Shaka. Child, she, she was, am I wrong? Her name is Yvette Evans, if I'm not mistaken, and she was knee deep in that shit too. Mm -hmm. I side eye her ass every time I see her. She's still into that shit. She was acting real stupid during the, the Trayvon situation and all of that. Ladies, y'all got to stop doing that shit. When I tell you that black men are here to number one, dupe you, number two, get some sex, they, they here's the deal, they can't stand you. I, I, I want to show y'all something real quick. With everything that's been said tonight, the result of all of this muling is just so you can do this. Ladies, this is one of the stupidest bitches I've ever seen in my life. She's basically volunteering to cut her camera on for a nigga that ain't cut his camera on. And all he's doing is insulting her. This is who y'all's fighting for. Let's go. Let's go. How tall you is? I'm 5'3". Let me see. Stand up. Let me see. I'm not standing up. You see what I'm saying? And that's why you big. You see what I mean? Simple shit like that. I'm not standing up. You don't want to get up because you're lazy. You're big. You're already big. Get your big ass up and stand up and show me your body. That's what's wrong with y'all. And I'm going to tell you about yourself. I'm not going to get on here and sugarcoat nothing. Stand the fuck up, big body. Let me see what you got going on over there. Oh, that is so rude. I bet you, I bet you get your big ass up, though. Uh you're not even showing yourself. Man, your mom come in the room talking about you got she got Wendy's downstairs. You be your fat ass be the first one down there. But when I tell you to stand up for two seconds, you can't do that for me. That shit weird. Okay, don't come for my fit. I ain't gonna cover your fit. Let me see. It's a little eh. It's a little eh. Hey, turn around. What do you mean turn around? Just like do a three sixty. That's a whole lot of ass. That dumb bitch sitting there laughing. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck is so funny. He they, insulting the look, fuck out of you. Ladies, they know what these black men give. And this motherfucker, you let a black woman sit across from her and say, get your big ass up. She might need to duck after she say that. That's going to be a fight. But she was showing all 32 of her teeth. Ladies, you cannot get through to women like this. Uh, and a lot of black women are like this. You close the door and they don't, nobody sees them. And they round here, muling, mammying, and pick me and they ass off. With all this history, all this fighting, all this marching, this is what it ended up being. And some of these black women are satisfied and will compete with her. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there's a girl somewhere that would willingly turn on her camera and tell that nigga whom they can't see, I, I ain't fat like her. Y'all, it's a mess. Please walk away. Anybody got anything for a I wish I would let a motherfucker who makes up the highest STI rate, highest illiteracy rate, highest crime rate, uh, most uh, statistically speaking, black men make up 20% of the serial unalivers, and they um, that is the largest of any minority group in America, y'all. Mm -hmm. I wish the fuck I would allow any of them motherfuckers to insult me. Not when you run behind women who look like me because you feel like white men are after you. I wish I would let a motherfucker who said that my presence was an extension of white supremacy insult me when he can't even defend himself. He's showing up to a, a, a bang bang fight and a knife fight with his dick because that's the only weapon that motherfucker can possess at this time, mostly because he got felonies. I wish I would let a motherfucker insult me like that. Girl, you gotta, gotta be out your fucking mind. All right, a lot of, of them are, have such low self-esteem. I've seen that so often. I, good evening, DZ. Good evening, ladies. Hey, Kyra. So I wanted to circle back to the Tulsa uh, riots. First of all, isn't Dick Rowland such a cicada name? Like, doesn't that describe them perfectly? The only thing that would be better is Dick Slingin, if that was his last name. Dick Slingin. <laughs> but, really but you know, it's true. It. And, then, and then the truth is, in that situation, you were mentioning how like 150 black people lost their homes. They should have let that cicada hang, literally. 
there what was the fuck? close to 15,000 people that ended up quote unquote homeless. That's when the Red Cross came in and built those temporary houses. Those temporary houses were designed to last six months. Now, here's my question. You got six months and you got a shelter. When you built Black Wall Street, Little Africa to be exact, why didn't you do it again? You saw white folks was willing to help you and y'all said that y'all had the goddamn skill. No, it's because you want to give these niggas an excuse not to bill you nothing and you still give them 15 pounds of pussy. That's what that is. Hmm. But anyway. Okay. I want to circle back to a comment that I saw earlier before Snapple goes um, because somebody was saying that Hallie went abort mission. Clearly, I need to clarify the comment that I made. The comment that I made is that, of course, she's earned her black card back now because if the picture, if the picture is worth a thousand words, and I've heard that it is, um, clearly she's having a baby. She's become a baby mama to a nigga who's determined to sabotage her career, which he's already admitted to publicly, and then tried to, of course, walk it back after he started getting backlash. And then she thought that that would help the situation by getting knocked up by somebody like this. But like I said, black women thrive off ghetto ratchet hood shit. You like shit like that. Because had, you know, y'all are telling people that they don't need wedding rings at all now. Marriage means absolutely nothing. Fuck being married. Marriage marriage ain't shit. Ain't that the message that we want to send, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's what that, it is. That situation got a little uh, a content creator very triggered because of obvious reasons. Go ahead, Snapple, because I want to get into this shit too. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Happy <laughs> Friday. Uh, I have to admit, y'all know I I struggle with um, paying attention to any kind of black history stuff. So I, you know, I'm not I'm not well versed, but I have heard about the Tulsa thing, and I have heard the community tout Black Wall Street as this utopia where there were these prominent established rocket scientists and whatnot. And um, you all have said a word. I don't even think I need to say anything up more on that. Um, regarding the girl in the, what was that, TikTok? Um, it's giving kitten heels. Um, you know, you know how those girls, those black women, they were calling into that show with bacon face with his bitch ass. I hope that nigga is rotten. I hope somebody pissed on his grave. But anyway, they were calling in his show, you know, embarrassing themselves like that. And it's just like, I don't know what it is about, you know, mammies and pick Misha's. They just, they don't have any self-respect or self-esteem. And I hope that girl, I hope that girl gets some. She ain't going to get none. She's not going to get none. She's one of the type of bitches that'll give smoke. Because here, here's the deal. She didn't even know what he looked like. It, all, he, all she knows is he's black and male. And that's all that matters. Okay? Looking at your screen, the fast and forward from Tulsa, because it, it has something to do with Tulsa. These were the men that you said that wouldn't dare. They wasn't interested in white women. They wouldn't do things like that. Y'all, there have been so many serial uh, grapists, as folks call them, Right? Throughout history that were black men and a lot of their victims were white women. I don't give a shit what you say. Also, uh, Black Wall Street is not the only black area that was burned to a fucking crisp because people like Diamond Dick couldn't keep their Diamond Dick in their fucking pants. They fucking around with these white men's wives and everything is dick, 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 like I've told y'all before. Ladies, I found this picture right here very, very interesting. Okay, the, the right one is from TikTok. You know, the one on the left, it, it comes from history. The The resemblance is uncanny. It looks like the same couple in a time machine. They just doing it on TikTok today. Ladies, this is not going to change no matter how many times you try to embarrass them. And why are you trying to embarrass them? Let them go. Becky, them see what's going on with them, right? That's none of your fucking business. Why would you beckon back such a creature, especially a creature that doesn't like you? These motherfuckers look like the same people to me. If somebody told me that that was their great, great grandparents, I would believe you because they look so much alike. And they on TikTok and on these pictures, basically looking at you like, I know you're mad. But the problem is I can't even say that they're lying because half of y'all be mad when you see it. Y'all got to get over this shit and you got to stop muling. The black community will not be rebuilt. First of all, it was never there. 
It never existed. Let's just, let's just keep it real. Anyway, anybody got anything on this nonsense? Some people look just alike to me. You know, uh, if you go back even further than that, because, and uh, disclaimer, another thing to make y'all pissed off, uh, the Moors were not black. They were actually from the Far East or the Middle East, as we call it in modern times. So another bubble busted tonight. Um, stay mad, bitches. But I thought we covered this what, last Friday in the Garden of Earthly Delights. White men have been telling y'all for centuries, listen, both these motherfuckers is treacherous. They put it in paintings. They put it in writing. They put it in history. They put it in black and white photos. Hell, if we go back even further, they were probably chiseling into a fucking cave wall. But y'all just won't heed the warning. Let the shit go. God damn. Yeah, that's no. what I need a, a fucking break. I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. It's like, listen, take a breath. Just take a breath. A lot of these folks shit been kind of dry because they ain't had shit to pick from. But here's the deal. You're going to be all right. I'm sure there's going to be another person get smacked in the face with a brick. I'm sure there's going to be another nigga that says he don't date white women. I'm sure there's going to be another celebrity that talks shit about dark skinned girls and all that type of shit. Just wait very patiently. Drink your tea. And then when the story drops, pounce on him. But oh. here's the deal. The story has already dropped. It's been like that since day one. Go real ahead. real quick um since oh and one more of y'all uh nigga pillars is what that's what i'm gonna be calling them tonight tyler perry told y'all that the only thing a man should pay is the light bill if he broke but you know he's one of y'all nigga pillars as i've been calling them because they the pillars of y'all community i don't know why y'all equate him with genius ain't nothing he done that has not revolved around black women's suffering do you understand that your suffering is his currency? But you bitches really out there. Well, he right. Because sometimes a man ain't got to bring nothing to the table. Well, bitch, you going to starve. Because if you with me, you bringing something to the table. Because I'm going to always feast. In their dreams. Oh, uh, before we move forward, on from the Garden of Earthly Delights, that picture is so chaotic. I have tried to. I need you to somebody to show me that. I'm not saying it's not there. But I mean, you're going to have to show me. It's just so much going on. I'm like. Where is it? That's actually the point of the picture to be so chaotic yeah. that you miss what's actually going on. But if you look in the back, like in the middle where the water is, if you look closely, you'll see it. Okay. You'll see several black women in peril in that picture. I, but, I definitely saw the ones that one that was down there with the white women staring up at the moon. Yeah. Okay. I saw that. And so I saw, I was like, it is so much going on. And I figured that was the point to where you kind of, it's, it is mm -hmm. meant to be chaotic. I got that part. But You're I'm meant like, to miss the most out. vulnerable person in the picture. That's it's you there, right there. You have to show it's, me it's this. There. It's there. It's kind of like toward the bottom of the painting to the left yeah. where, where the boat is. And there's a, a black dude basically abandoning a black woman and, and basically just like trying to, with all his might, get to a white girl. I, I, it's just it's what it is. That I painting is it. hundreds of years old. So of why these black women are still asking this question today, I don't. No, it's always been like that. They've always hated black women's guts. You are just there for convenience. That's it. And I wish you'd knock it off. The point of the painting is to show who is the most vulnerable and who is the one who is most vulnerable is the one who is unseen and unheard. And it also kind of highlights how why black women have to have kind of advocate for themselves. I actually just uh, helped a friend write a paper on that like two years ago. That's how I know about the picture because I was like, yeah, I've, I've seen this before. But you have to go through it. But it is there toward the bottom left. And you can see it there. The whole point is to show you black women that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you fight, no matter who you stand among, you don't have an ally except for white men, ironically. And then the motherfuckers, and then the men y'all was taught to hate by them, the other motherfuckers. White women and black men want y'all to hate white men. They really do because this is a power struggle. This is not just you and him. It's a power struggle between the two of them because they stand, as I said before, juxtaposed to power. They can never truly seize it because they both worthless and lazy as fuck. Mm -hmm. it is. Easy. Yes, black. I'm oh, sorry. You mentioned Brick, brick Gate, and I just wanted to mention before we move on because I know we about everybody. We are tired of talking about her over here, but. I just wanted to put something out there. She um, finna spill the tea. We didn't put <laughs> listen. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. We didn't Come put on. it in Discord because you know yeah. we found we gather got a couple around, things. Gather it, round, birds. Yeah. Gather yeah. round for the crumbs. Yeah. But um, yeah, she had up, updated her GoFundMe account and she added some documents to prove that she was in fact assaulted or you know some hospital paperwork. But I noticed that 
on the hospital documentation, she told them that she was hit with a brick and by a male who tried to force her into a car. So she was essentially, uh, you know, was a, a attempted kidnapping. I'm just, you know, I'm just interested in why that part was left out. You know, she she told social media that he hit her with a brick. If there is a, you know, a kidnapper or something else nefarious going on like that, you you know, I'm I to me it just highlighted more of the. Mammy antics, whether the shit happened or it didn't happen. I don't know what the hell is going on, but she she conveniently left that part out, but it's in the hospital document. So she didn't tell the hospital that somebody smacked her because they um asked for the number and she didn't give it to them. She said it was somebody trying to put her into a car. Here's the thing. I told y'all black folks are attention whores. Okay. It's clear that she got hit with a fucking brick or, or hit with some blunt object, whether it was a brick or not, I don't know. But look at all the sh look at how she went about all of this shit. Uh, ma'am, folks got so mad at me. Ladies, when we first started talking about that goofy bitch, I said, let's just take a look at her real quick. She's not black men's preferred aesthetic. And oh my God, the hate that I got because of that shit. Uh, ladies, uh, it looks like nobody asked her for the number. It looked like she was just simply being assaulted. I'm telling you. This is why these whores out here call it the preference. And I really hate that fucking word. The preference is basically saying, let's see what these broke, dusty, hateful, violent ass sons of bitches prefer in a woman. Why do you give a fuck? Huh? A lot of black women. I'm, are what I'm, Go ahead. Back to the, the power struggle. What I don't understand is that we can see that power struggle at every level and the black men lose every time. They're always down at the bottom. But the whole thing is the wedges. Black, See here, revisionist history and lies, outright lies are basically wedges because here's the thing. They need to keep you, everybody's juxtaposed to power. Black women can really do something with that power. Okay? Because black women can step up white dudes respect them okay however i've noticed that i'm talking in general terms they don't really respect respect becky too much and they don't really respect the black man because he won't build anything Ebony. so basically you need the wedge to keep black women isolated check it out though ebony here's the thing um with how can i put this without getting flagged okay um that respect factor if you built something, ladies, and this includes y'all, if you worked your ass off day in, day out, I mean, using elbow grease to build something for somebody and you're like, ta-da, here it is. What do you think of my work? It's here for you to be protected. You're the beauty standard. You're everything. You're to be sought after. Here you go, beautiful. And then she trots off, right? Fucking everything in sight and then rage against you. What, what, what the fuck would you, you lose, lose respect for that motherfucker too. White men did everything for them. Yes. Everything. Yes. The same way you did everything for black men. And they said, fuck yourself. And, and we're going to do what we want to do. These two motherfuckers on the screen are the most coveted people on the planet by their respective counterparts. So yeah, the respect's gone. Okay. <laughs> I thought you had more to say, but it is what it is, huh? I, like, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to tell you. I really don't. But I know you, what to say. Black women, go get that power that you left, that you ignored, and sat there and felt sorry for yourself and trying to get Tyrone to look at you in a different way. He will never look at you in a different way. His, his, his rose-colored glasses do not point to you. Yeah, it doesn't. And you know, in the back of my mind, sometimes I feel sorry for these bitches, but I can't. I, I don't. I, I, ignorance gets on my nerves. It really does. You know, that's how they feel. And I think these mammies honestly think that if they just find the formula that they can finally reel these men in. Egypt sent me a, a, a post from Facebook and this lady said, I still got it um, in my cloud. Right. This black lady said, black men, we really, really need y'all we really need y'all to get it together because we need y'all for so many things if y'all would have saw how many niggas reacted with the laughing emoji it would make you faint i'm thinking why did you put this up whore take this shit down effective immediately 
they're not checking for you. They don't have to because you're gonna be there anyway. You're gonna and be who the fuck is we? We yeah. don't need <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, they kill me with we. No, bitch, ain't no we. You ain't you. No, they kill me with that shit. You can't include me in some bitch. No, <laughs> I'm serious. Welcome back, Melanie. What hey. you got on anything? Just hit hit it hit it where you want to, babe. I'm going to hit it with this. I mean, I think we already know this. Uh, them, Cicadas, and Becky, they're the same person. Nothing has been appreciated. And even to this day in 2023, it's like, look at us. Still food. Not, not us women on the panel. Not y'all in the audience. I'm just saying black women in general still cannot be saved, still cannot be helped. Every time I turn around, some black woman is doing something foolish and stupid. And it's like, okay. It's not getting across to everybody, but I'm like you. I used to try to, I, I want to see black women win as a whole. I wanted to see us do the damn thing, but I, I don't know. It's not going to happen. And that, that crushes my heart. It really does. Cause I, I want it what's best for them, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it real. Like I always do. Whatever I see in front of my eyes, I'm going to tell you that shit. I'm going to describe what I see in front of my eyes. And if you hotel bitches will go and do your research, you'll find out that the nappy headed niggas been lying to y'all. Okay. You have literally been the helpmate classified as the helpmate, but you were actually the, the, the soldier guarding the goddamn door and all that shit for them. And you don't see that shit. And you take a backseat to a motherfucker that can't stand you. It's so weird. And I don't want to use the term mental health or overuse it, but something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you, bitch. I'm well, sorry. I used to want the best for us. But after I had to learn for myself that a lot of these bitches are just as likely to turn around and slit your damn mm -hmm. throat mm -hmm. in the process of you mm -hmm. trying to help them, then they are to, they are to wake up and see the light. I just had to back away from it. That's why at this point, I don't give a shit. I don't. Yeah. I can't afford to. I don't. Yeah. I don't either. I've been burnt. I've been burnt with good and with good intention and non ulterior motives. And at the end of the day, it didn't pay off. They're all treacherous. That's the truth. Like I'm gonna be real with y'all. I gave up on black women. I've been. I burn bridges left and fucking right, and just keep worn by the fire. At this point, y'all bitches gonna be where y'all gonna be, and there's nothing I can do to save you. Oh, and for you hotel up mammies, the ones who espouse Dr. Ivan Sativas, they Sativas, they came before Columbus. A lot of his shit has been recently debunked by, I believe, um, a professor at Cambridge University. You should check out his paper. Mm. Go ahead, Kyra. Well, I was just gonna say that. The thing is, these isn't it interesting that these same other black women, not the ladies over here, they will let these cicadas drag them and dog walk them for filth. But because we say hashtag all, oh, all hell has to break loose. They have to try to dox. They have to try to expose. They have to try to hurt us in some way. So, yes, leave them where they are. And. As DZ has been encouraging you, cut off your mammy friends and relatives in life. Just let them do them because they will backstab you whenever they get mad or whenever Tyrone tells them to. Oh, a mammy is just as dangerous as the, the fucking Tyrone. They the same androgynous motherfucker at this point. You hotel mammies know exactly what I talk, I'm saying when you talk about androgyny, when y'all talk about the gods and all that shit weren't, didn't have a gender, so on and so forth. Y'all are one big androgynous, stupid ass motherfucker together. They are their biggest co-conspirators. I've been saying that ever since I, ever since I've been on here, I've been saying they are their co-conspirators and they have proven that to be true time and time again a lot of times these are their partners in crime it's not just the, the black men committing the crimes now they're right there next to them because they're so hung up on that Bonnie and Clyde shit and it's like girl get the fuck out of here you ready to throw away your yeah. life your freedom everything for and for what and it's oh yeah these people before we move on you said that nappy hair or you are texturous so be ready for that <laughs> You are attached to this. You are attached to this. Aaliyah, Aaliyah, but think about, think about these women. Before they started committing the violent crimes, how many times have we seen them just stand by when they know that their son, their husband is creeping into their daughter's room? Oops. Well, not, well, oh. not only that, what about the ones, what about these 
older women that lie for them in court. Lie for them in court so they won't I get no time that. knowing good and well that they did what they did. I can say that because my grandmother did this. Oh, yeah. that He wasn't raised like that. I don't know. I she, kept him in the church. Them bitches. She, she, mm. Yeah, she lied for him in court. In court, Ooh, lied it, for him. Isn't it funny how the most dangerous thing to a black man is another black man? But the most dangerous thing to a black woman is a black woman and a black man. Ain't that crazy? Ladies, listen, I'm glad y'all segued so well. That just landed so beautifully. One of y'all just said, okay, that they are like the co-conspirator. Uh, black women are being black men's co-conspirator. It's even worse than that. Ladies, they out here doing it by themselves. And I want to show y'all something. Y'all getting ready to make so many enemies. Y'all enemy is already the black man. He's already showed you that. But y'all getting ready to make enemies across the board. No, y'all ain't out here doing this shit right here. Take a gander. New at 10, we're going to talk about the push for a bigger police presence in Chinatown. All this after the brutal beating and carjacking of a rideshare driver this week. The chase, the beating, the robbery, all of it captured on this surveillance camera right here. Did you see that? Those were black women. Oh, let's take it back five seconds. I know you're so used to seeing them. Hey, look, you're used to seeing black men doing that. I told y'all they are morphing into one stupid ass bitch together. Let's go again, Zaddy. The chase, the beating, the robbery, all of it captured on this surveillance camera right here. NBC 5's Natalie Martinez has the story tonight. In horrific daylight attack and carjacking in Chinatown Tuesday night, about 5.30, an innocent man is attacked by three women, clearly larger than him, on the 200 block of 22nd Place. I fight them. I know the scare. Dan Chin Chi bravely explains what happened to him. Look at that crowd right there. Look at those five people right there. Black women, you are making enemies out here. You're making enemies out here. Look at the advocate to the right. That's Raul, okay? That's Mr. Gonzalez. You're making enemies out, out of Mr. Lingling Ling and Mr. Gonzalez, and you cannot afford to do so. What has gotten into you, mammies? I don't fucking know. But this right here, this opened up a whole nother can of worms that you ain't ready for. Take a listen, ladies. They hit me and then they they hold me, you know, and uh, and uh, they put my car key, you know, and I fight them. Then I try to block them and then they start my car and they are going away. In surveillance video, you can see the 61-year-old wobbling to regain his footing after the first attack. Then he goes to the passenger door to try to regain control of his car. I only one person. I'm not. I'm skinny, you know. And there are three people. One of the brazen criminals boldly goes back to the car and grabs what appears to be a metal pipe, chasing Mr. Shea down, nearly running him over as they take off with a stolen car that he uses for his job as a rideshare driver. He's my. He's on his own business, parking the car and got beat up by three women. Um, this is ridiculous. Activists and residents are angry. Mr. Xi is not able to work. This activist offering a reward for the capture of the brutal trio. I'm offering a $3,000 reward to anybody that could give any information that could lead to the arrest and the conviction of who's responsible for this. Raul, you're making enemies out of Raul and Mr. Lin. You are going to be fucked up out here. Ladies, every prediction that we've ever made has come true. Black women are in a mess. They followed these niggas into Niggerville, and it is a mess. You don't want, you already got the twerking stereotype. It is down packed. I mean, ass clapping all over the place. Now you a thug too? You a thug too? Isn't this a hate crime? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I was, okay. was going to say too, like, I'm, I love when you show stories like this, where you show these black women, mammy hoes in their natural form, because we always get, detractors oh y'all don't care about black women y'all don't care about look we i said it before we are not going to be on one accord with mammies this is despicable this is despicable fucking behavior that man was just trying to do could you imagine just trying to do your job and a bunch of bitches oh god i can't i See, they, they got banged, banged. This they is got gonna have banged. this is gonna have consequences that y'all not uh, ladies look you better, divested women, I'm only talking to you. Stop associating 
with that ratchet friend, that one that's coming outside with that scarf. You seen all them scarves on them bitches? You don't want to be around these whores. They are headed somewhere that it's going to be the point of no return. You're not going to be able to take enough femininity courses to come back to from where y'all going. Y'all headed mm -hmm. somewhere where you're being seen exactly like these niggas. Big yes, ma'am, Snapple. Yeah. Oh, no, I had to take a breath because I, I just didn't want to violate community guidelines. I had to take a breath. I wanted to finish my thought. It, these be the same bitches that when they get popped, right, and they get taken up off this earth in some way, they light up the room and they get described as, you know, wonderful women. Life of the party. Life of the part and, and 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 we're the mean girls when we're like not buying the bullshit. Like these are these the bitches that these are the black women that we supposed to give a fuck about when they when they get their issue when they run up on the next motherfucker that's gonna defend themselves and they get fucking put down or you know maybe they'll try to steal from a store while they're pregnant and run over a police officer and get put I don't fucking know these is the bitches right that y'all want us to fucking protest for and and coddle no we're not gonna do that shit fuck these hoes I hope they get caught they need to be under the jail that's some that's fucked up and and they running around here looking like us acting like that that's some fucking bullshit let me say this real quick just back in just yesterday on my patreon there was there's a recording that I snatched up out the sky that was sent to me that I kept in my cloud, right? Of a bitch that y'all are very aware of that was saying those bitches are terrible. I advocate for all black women and I don't care who they're fucking and sleeping with. This is why that's problematic. I'm you sorry, but may I say something really quick? Go ahead. Because okay. they getting on my fucking nerves with that shit. Mine too. And thank you, Snapple, because you put that information earlier beautifully. I agree with you 100%. But in caring about divested Black women, because we walk around looking like y'all, I also care about how we are perceived in the world at large. Yes. You already have so little protection. That's why when you go somewhere, you need to walk into a room with poise and grace and not clapping your ass cheeks. That's why when you go visit a country... Go ahead, Aaliyah. Now, to be honest, I don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about us. I don't give a fuck about our detractors. I don't give a fuck about any of that because the same bitches that want everybody to think that they can't stand us is the same bitches that's here at every live stream is the same bitches that's still in commentary and repeating that shit whether they want to admit it to their audience or not. So they want people to think that they ain't don't really fuck with us like that or they don't rock with what we saying or they ain't feeling this shit over here but they a motherfucking lie because your ass here every Tuesday and Friday they know what the fuck we're saying is true. Exactly. They know what we're saying is true. Exactly. And then, now you wait. Once once we go behind the wall, because that's where the fuck we going, you're going to hear these bitches saying, y'all are just like them. You're just like trash bags. And sip tea with me about this, that, and the other. I saw another noodle head bitch. Oh, my grandma was there. Oh, coincidentally, you talking about grandparents now. So, hey, just go ahead and let them know. I don't like those bitches, but they got some good points. Go <laughs> say it. How about that part? Speaking of your Patreon post yesterday of that recording, you know, I was out driving earlier today. And did you know that Kentucky Fried Chicken has eight hot and spicy wings for four ninety nine dollars right now? <laughs> you know what, Kyra? Go back into the corner. You and time out. You just ain't going to act right. Why, where did she come up with this? Oh, Kyra, I can't stand you. I mean, we said before, the thing is, you don't divest to stop muling and mammying for the naker to turn around and start muling and mammying for black women. It does not work that way. So when it comes to holding black women accountable, they gonna own, I've been told y'all bitches from day one, go all the way back. Let your fingers do the walking and scroll. You may not want to own your part and that's fine. But over here, you gonna own that shit whether you want to or not. And I don't give a fuck how you feel about that. As far as all that twerking shit, that whole culture shit i'm over that conversation i moved on from it i already said my piece on that i don't give a fuck because the more we talk about it the worse these bitches get and they don't want to change anything about it so since we're trying to police black women then don't and when that shit come back later on i don't want to hear a motherfucking thing about it don't expect no sympathy no empathy and nothing else from me because i ain't got nothing for you see this is the type of shit we be talking about you bitches want to be young dumb and full of cum and hard head and try to somebody trying to run you oh we 
we actually listen to them. They trying to disank the fifties, or they trying to they they was trying to put black women back in chains like we slaves and all kind of shit. When people just trying to tell you to have some class, cool, and decorum, and if that's what you associate that shit with, then fine, do whatever it is that you want to do. And you got bitches out of here out here that has hijacked the entire conversation, like they are the ones that are responsible for starting the conversation. So since you want to lead the conversation and lead the charge against the whole culture. I'm going to back the fuck off and let you take it and run with it because I'm tired of these hoes coming behind us taking commentary that, that clearly came from over here pretending like that's some shit they came up with. So I tell you what, I'm going to let y'all have that shit. That's what I'm going to do. I got a, a piece of advice for some of the content creators. Do not make posts on your com community wall while you're emotional. Stop that shit. This is just your sister talking to you. Don't get all emotional. Damn near fling open your laptop where you almost break the shit in half and get the banging on that shit with them crusty ass nails trying to make a point. See, because what your audience is going to do is call you out on your hypocrisy. I'm just trying to tell you. Be very careful. Take a breath. Calm down. Get some lemonade with some ice. You can even put a little bit of cherry syrup in it. Just chill for a second. Then make your post. Because Easy. yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I got a suggestion. <laughs> can we just can we just start uh being more fair and balanced and do get ready with me videos? Mm, if you get ready with me, you I leave in Blackistan. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you gonna put on a pair of shoes, grab your purse, and never look back. That's get ready with me. You want to travel vlog? Travel your ass up out of Blackistan, right? Out of <laughs> out of stupidville. That's my get ready with me. Fuck out of here. Well, I want to say this is my second time around. And um, trying to, you know, help black women that I don't even know out of Blackistan. Thank you for the opportunity, DZ. But when I did this first time, when I completely divested and I tried to bring people with me, oh, honey, all they wanted to do was bring me back. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. That's when I learned my lesson. You know, I'm not going to get black eyes and shit sitting around collateral damage because you cannot leave. Protect yourselves, ladies. Exactly. They, they just don't want to leave. The one thing I noticed about people in Blackistan, y'all, is they're incredibly comfortable being the bottom of the fucking barrel, but then complain about the barrel that none of the niggas in your community built. So you stuck in a barrel that niggas didn't build, but you're complaining about the biting the hands that feeds you. That shit don't make no fucking sense to me. I had to learn that too early on, Ebony, that like some of the, the women I served with, some of the women I wanted to be friends with, they were just too entrenched in that bullshit. And every time I would come up like, hey, maybe Maybe you should try this or maybe you should do this a little bit different. Well, you don't like black men no way because so you got problems. So, I mean, I'm not going to leave my black men. I, I just I learned to leave it alone. I well, they well Miss Miss Rove, it was my family. It was my family I tried to drag with me. It was cousins. It was sisters. It was it was people that I that I knew were Blackistan had something for them. And what That's they what had for me, to. I was not going to do. So I tried with family members first time and it left me disappointed. Okay. And my wallet was lighter. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I come around this time and it's like, oh, same story. God damn decades behind. Mm. I don't pay light bills anymore for folk. I used to. I don't pay rent for folk anymore. I used to. Uh, no, bitch. I'm I'm done. Me too. You're not I'm... getting ready to keep circling back over here. But every time uh you you know you don't return my text, you sitting up here ooching and ooching on that STD dick, bitch. Lose here. That's not my number no more. Here here's my text now number, and I'll get to you whenever I can get to that goddamn app. I got Listen. the notifications off. I, I don't fuck with these hoes. Listen. I am done, bitch. I don't even pray for these bitches. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing for you. Wow, that no way, prayer. Woo. That's, not that's a wing, hard. not a prayer, not a thought, not listen, not no thought, nothing. I don't pray for none of you bitches. Because you when I was trying to pray for you bitches, y'all were praying on me. I think you fuck not. You got it, sis. You hold hold the motherfucking line. I don't think y'all know how dangerous this shit on the screen is. This is this is not good. Okay. Check back with me in September of 2024. And let's do a year in review. Remember this day, ladies, it is September 15th. This time next year, there's going to be a lot of blood, okay? And it's going to be coming from the veins of black women. These bitches, get away from them, okay? 
Get the fuck far away as you can from them. And nobody's telling you you can't love them. I still love the, the female members of my family. Do I fuck with them? Nope. I have two women that I fuck with. One is my aunt and one is my sister. Point blank period. And I have more than one sister. I don't fuck with that mammy bitch either. And she knows it. She knows that shit. She passes message from one sister to the other to get it to me. Because don't talk to me. Because you, you got something wrong with you. Okay, my my the family members that I have know and love, they know the tea and they know good and well. I don't play that shit. Don't they, come over they, here with that. They don't want help. They don't want change. They are extremely immature. They don't they aren't open to anything. All they like is ghetto, ratchet, hood shit. They they say they don't, but you you can tell by the shit that they promote constantly that that just is not the case because anybody who suggests anything that's different it's, it's a problem it doesn't matter what it is anytime you say something so all of a sudden every time you tell people to behave respectively oh that's respectability politics that's white folks shit so basically acting like normal human beings is white folks shit because right now a lot of you motherfuckers acting like animals and you don't like it when we call that shit what it is but that's exactly what the fuck it is you're acting like you were raised born and raised in barns like you have no fucking home training whatsoever and you think i'm trying to associate myself with that and then these dusty bitches got the nerve to turn around and tell me that they're the ones that don't want to be associated with me and or us when i'm the one with the good name and the reputation that i have worked my ass off bitch i don't want no association or association or affiliation with this fuck shit y'all got going on all because we say some cuss words here and there by the way which was fucking classless originally when we first got on here and was saying that now all of a sudden i'm here l bomb after l bomb and people saying all kind of shit but it was ghetto unladylike and classless when we got on this motherfucker and was talking a certain way but now bitches adopting that shit too and see this is what the fuck i'm talking about that's why i say yeah us, you know, taking a break from this motherfucker. I ain't gonna miss a goddamn thing about it at all. And I've been told DZ and she can verify it. We should have been did this shit and let them hoes had that shit. Darling, look, I'm waiting on one of these bitches to call what y'all just witnessed on this screen, ghetto and classless, okay? I said to y'all one time, whenever I see a pregnant black woman these days, I cringe because I know what's coming out of her ass. And it's getting worse because now it's spreading to their female children. And that's just so sad. It's really sad. As far as that co-conspirator shit go, they didn't have a black man there to commit that goddamn felony that they just did. They're doing it on their own now. Last time I was here, I told y'all I saw a black woman dumping with a rifle outside of a pickup truck, hitting that girl with accuracy. It's a mess. They have literally acquiesce to all the targets that these niggas originally put out for him for them around 2010 2008 type shit oh we we going natural oh we taking off all this makeup oh we're gonna it's practice some pussy control oh we're gonna we're gonna do all this shit and then you found out that they they didn't give a fuck about that shit so then you started emulating them to be more like them because you believe in this twin flame bullshit and you know all I need in my life is it is me and my girlfriend. No, that's just a song whore. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to comment on a point you just made. So, you know, they're look, they're so-called pioneers, I'll say that, who won't condemn this behavior of these violent, aggressive mammies, these catastrophic mammies who are causing harm to entire communities and our image, right? But they want to clutch their pearls because we curse a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We get a little ignorant on the live streams and we might we might have a few nicknames for a couple entities. So they want to have the audacity to sit there and compare us having commentary, some spicy commentary. They have the audacity to, to compare that to violent and inward and unaliving people that Nick sells and shit be doing. But they won't condemn this behavior of these violent ass <laughs> names fucking up but airports. That what she's but referring Snapple, to she, what she's referring to y'all is that fucking post yesterday mm -hmm. that was very very important some of y'all people out here that y'all following is really really trashing the fuck out of y'all image between them and these bitches on the screen and, screen and bitches like them that they fucking y'all image up I have removed myself so far from these people go ahead Kyra 
Well, Snapple, I just wanted to say, well, you have to remember the quote unquote pioneers in question. One has a short bus son that she desperately wants black women to give coochie to. And then the other one likes to, you know, start up, you know, marches and stuff and run off with money. So Mm -hmm. I'm just tired of these raggedy hoes. And their ignorance and delusions. Like, first of all, we're not even gonna sit there and let the, that shit slide. Because I've heard some other, other dusty BWE bitches on this platform too say similar shit. Just because we up here popping our shit, giving our commentary, that is that is okay. That is all right. Mm-hmm. That is not the same yeah, but, to what y'all thons are doing. Y'all got fucked up. Well, we, we, ain't, we, ain't Aaliyah, we, we know you shit. don't give a fuck, <laughs> Aaliyah. Aaliyah, we ain't know no, you don't give no fuck. Ain't nobody, no, 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 no. Ain't nobody it finna is. explain shit to these hoes. Fuck these hoes. Ain't nobody finna explain a motherfucking thing to them. Because, they don't need to have explanation because they already know the tea. Some of them laying mm-hmm. up with these motherfuckers. Because Some of them getting of, pregnant. Hold up, Aaliyah. Some of them laying up with these motherfuckers. Some of them getting pregnant by these motherfuckers. Why they telling you that they so terrible, like these niggas are terrible, and that part is true. But you opening up that nasty, funky ass crotch to these same niggas that you can't stand. So where does it reconcile? When are you going to have some pussy management? When are you going to stop fucking with those same motherfuckers? When are you going to do what you claim that everybody else needs to do? Because when you hit in broadcast, bitch, you rolling in the hay with <laughs> syphilis sack around this bitch. <laughs> syphilis sack. <laughs> oh, dude. Sidebar, did y'all know that scientists have found that people who actually curse or swear a lot are of higher intelligent quotient than those yep. their peers? Look so on average, on average, a person who swears a lot, i.e. all of us, have an IQ that usually tops between 132 and 1. 46 and that's the window now i'm not going to sit up here and say that we are like bill not a science guy or any other great scientist but i, oh, like I can say with we, certainty i am well, you can I you can so we can yeah. i can say with certainty that well, i thank definitely you am. thank you leah and see a lot of people <laughs> let the southern accent fool them but it don't matter. I can go to I can go toe to toe with the best of them. I'm good. I'm damn good at what I do. I've earned the right. That's why well, I said can't tell me shit because I work hard all weekend. When I get off and I want to get up here and talk some shit with my girls, I'm gonna do that. And I ain't got to explain a motherfucking thing to nobody. Well, I don't have a sexy southern accent, right? But I know some stuff too. <laughs> Back you there, know, back in the day. Anything, anything about history, ask me. I'll let you know and I'll point you to sources like I do up here all the time. So I also another thing, bitch, don't be sitting up here saying that we're all lying about these statistical data that's openly available to the public and this Who historical. Said that? Oh, th- you know I be I be hanging upside down like a bat. Meet me in Discord. That's okay. that's it. Go ahead. But yeah, we don't sit up here and lie about that shit. We tell y'all the truth. It's not my fault you can't fucking handle the truth, be it scientifically, historically, mathematically, or whatever have you. That's not a problem for me or the ladies up here or the ladies in the chat. That's a you problem, bitch. Go get educated. Y'all be believing all this pseudoscience and esoteric shit, but you don't actually look into the foundational belief structure that you have. Where did you get those beliefs from other than black men? Because they bequeath y'all a lot of bullshit that y'all are still peddling today. How about you question the source? Why is that? Why is it black women don't listen to anybody unless it has a penis? A black man (laughs) with a penis? Why? They won't listen to anything. Ebony, is it a true? Check it out. You got a huge point right there. But you saw we just put up Albert Broussard, right? They're Texas A&M scholar. They ignore the shit out of him when it came to Tulsa. Huh? They act like his ass didn't exist. They have to keep their victim card in place. And no worries, black women, mammies, your victim card will be there because people are going to stop trusting you when you have on a hoodie because you are acting just like these niggas when they got a hoodie on. You, you, you suspicious. You looking around. You doing smashing grabs. You don't have any purpose. You looking at it. Look. You're going to get that that victim card. Don't worry about it. This time next year, y'all going to have a different tune. I can promise you. Either that or it's going to be a bunch of y'all locked up or six feet deep. Look, I'll wait for it. I've been waiting on this day. I hate that you're going to go down with the ship, but you're going down, whore. You're going down. That's sad. Protect yourself from these people, ladies. Protect yourself. I know every now and then a mammy does have a funny joke. That lady that you go way back with. Yeah, she got a funny joke every now and then, but her existence is not a joke. And you don't need to tie your existence in with that bitch. Laugh at her from afar. Okay. And what she and what she's ca- and what she's capable of is not a joke. 
Hmm. I, you'd be surprised at what a lot of these women are capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Speaking and, of man music, Sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Snow. No, go ahead, Kyra. Sorry. I just wanted to also say is, so like you said, mammies are going to go down with this ship, but remember, there will be no one to advocate for you because the black community doesn't care about black girls or black women. And therefore, because you haven't promoted your own interests, that means others in society don't care about black women or black girls. So when Tyrone goes out there, you can still find people to go march and protest and fight the system for him. But you, you're going to get thrown in jail and locked with locked away with the key, no keys. You're Tyrone, gonna be gone. Tyrone has showed you that. And y'all remember DeSantis? Um, he, I would be hooking up one of the ladies with him if he wasn't married. Pull up, love DeSantis. All right. Anyway, next, y'all remember he removed Miss Monique or whatever the fuck her name was. That was a DA down there in Florida, uh, because she wasn't getting these little black kids in check. She, he gave that job to a black man. Do you think he took up for her? Do you think he said, give Monique another try? Nope. He put his blue suit on, put his bow tie on, accepted the position and told that bitch to kick rocks. So you keep taking up for these black men if you want to. When it comes to survival, they will leave you behind back to the painting. It's been the same way for hundreds of years. Okay. The proof is in the pudding. Okay. And the pudding ain't chocolate. It's vanilla. Ha! That's what's up. (laughs) <laughs> I don't mean to laugh because it's stupid. Yeah, but they don't see it that way. I feel like if black women truly sat down and looked at history, like truly examined it and like looked at all the stats that we be spitting out, there is no way you can look at all that shit and still be like, I'm still with the Kings, but I know bitches going to do that anyway. Mm-hmm. They're just going to look at us and make us public enemy number one. Like we, uh, somebody said we were the long arm of, we were literal white supremacists, y'all. So congratulations on your entrance into the white supremacy right. structure. Okay. So, I'll be there. Yeah. I love, I love white men. I do. I, I'm going yes. to love on one all weekend. I'm a, I'm a, mm. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I do have a, 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 an idea as for some of the hate. Well, of course, we all know that we say hashtag all. Mm -hmm. We make no exceptions. That's one. But basically, we're innovators. They want to take what we say and kind of use it and make it work for them. But they can't because they're mammies. You know what I mean? We live it. We are it. They're not. I don't know what it's like to feel such contempt for people that make your life easier. As much as you can't stand them. White men make your life easier, okay? Wherever you're sitting at right now, you see it all around you. Nothing that's sitting around you that made your life easier today, okay, was done or produced, manufactured, or sold to you by a black man, except for lies. You do like the lies. Mm -hmm. Anybody got anything before I move on to this next bullshit? Because school's back in session, and so are the attacks. Y'all good? Let's go. Let's go. Schools un- schools in session. Y'all be careful. Madison police say they've arrested a man suspected of brutally attacking and sexually assaulting a UW Madison student Sunday morning. Our Bill Miston joins us now from the newsroom with new information learned at a press conference this afternoon. Good evening, guys. Police said video evidence played a key role in identifying the suspect. 26-year-old Brandon Thompson hasn't been formally charged, but he was booked into the Dane County Jail this morning on recommended charges of first-degree sexual assault, first-degree reckless injury, and strangulation. Police say he's the suspect in the attack. The woman was found near Wilson in Bedford. That's just a, just a couple blocks away from the Cole Center. Now, as of Sunday, she was in critical condition. Police say officers worked around the clock over the weekend, coming in over that holiday. That video, witness statements, and biological evidence were instrumental in building a case and leading to a suspect. Our investigation revealed that Thompson was at the scene of the crime as evidenced by a witness during our initial canvas. Thompson told this witness that he had, quote, just found our survivor pretending to be an innocent bystander. Video evidence would play an important role in the investigation. In fact, video that we received from the community proved to be a linchpin in the investigation. Now, police say that video was so crucial in part because cops were able to get a read on a license plate and a vehicle 
and then Thompson. Now, Wisconsin court records show Thompson has no criminal history, and police say there is no known connection between Thompson and the survivor of this attack. This afternoon, police declined to update the public on the woman's condition, but that supporting her and her family are the focus right now. So here's the deal. One key point. He didn't have a criminal record, okay? Remember all that vetting and bullshit that they talk to you about with black males? He didn't have a criminal record. So what you looking at? Are you going to look up his employment record? Well, if that's kind of shoddy, he's going to tell you white supremacy is doing that. They're racist and they didn't want to hire him. So what you do? Gamble with your life. That's exactly what you do. Okay. School's back in session, ladies. And these college campuses are always going to have these dusty fucks around them, especially around the freshmen. They just newly out of their home. They're in a new environment. Half the time they don't know their way around the city. What's the bad parts? What's the good parts? And all that good shit. So those of y'all that are in college right now, please be careful. Please at least have mace. Please stay out of areas where they hang. If somebody is, you know, just use your logic, okay? Because you already know what they on. Can, All I, right. can I say one thing? Absolutely. And just because you're at a good school or a PWI or something, you know, even Ivy League, you are not safe if you are not careful. Period. Listen, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck he was doing on campus because not once did they say he was a student there. So what the fuck was he doing frequent in those areas? America has roughly 70 million cameras available at all time for CCTV uh, law enforcement purposes. And that doesn't even include your ring cameras, your doorbell cameras. So he had to know somebody was watching his stank snake ass. There's no way he didn't know that. But this is you mammy bitch's fault because every time you get your ass out there, you lace up those boots over those fat ass bunions that you carry around and you stomp the yard for one of them. Them, you make it unsafe for everybody around you. They ought to sequester you bitches off with the, those sons and niggas you love so much and just let y'all consume each other. Ladies, we started out on the young end, right? On the screen it says they love freshmen. They do. They love minors as well. And they love elderly women with dementia. Ladies, you talk about getting laws changed. With it, those of you that's out here lying to these women and stealing their money. How about this? Why don't you let the uh, powers that be know that even when somebody is an ex-offender, you know, even when they're old, they're still that. Ladies, hold your britches. First we was young, now we old. We begin tonight with a story that will leave you shocked and outraged. A woman fighting for justice after she says her 96-year-old grandmother was sexually assaulted by another resident in an Indiana nursing home. The Hello. Hello. Okay. Black men are a protected class. They're not going to show you his picture. Little research and a little bit of finger tapping on a, on a keyboard will let you see that that's a black man. OK, just because they get old doesn't mean that they still not dusty. OK, they still a little violent when it comes to their dangling. That's all they had their entire life from Tulsa up to now. It's all about the dangling right along with these bitches. Listen, this is a damn shame. You supposed to be able to put your mother or whoever in the care of a nursing home and think that everything's going to be OK. But when they're allowing black male residents that used to be crime motherfucking committers in the fucking 50s, 60s, and 70s around this motherfucker in there with your mama. She's still in the same danger you're on when you're over there on Fifth Street. Let's go. Accused a registered sex offender. And nearly two weeks after the incident, he's still there living in the same facility. CBS 2 Suzanne Lemonio is always investigating, joins us live now in East Chicago, Indiana. And Suzanne, the details of this are tough to hear, but important for the safety of people in nursing homes. Joe, Erica, Ruth Reed has lived right here behind me in this facility for the past two years. Now, her granddaughter has power of attorney, and she said it is okay to use her grandmother's name because she wants her grandmother's story told. It has, it has torn me apart. My grandmother don't deserve this. Mammies, listen, this is your fault, right? Cause I saw y'all twerking uh, when I told you that your granddaddies wasn't shit. They not, I didn't lie yesterday, uh, Tuesday, whenever the fuck that was. This woman's heart is broken and mine would be too if somebody did my grandmother like this. Ladies, it's hashtag all, regardless of what their religion is, 
their age, right? What they did for a living, their education level. Those motherfuckers are dusty. I'm not going to stop it again, but let's go ahead and finish up. Gloriette Evans Dumas fights back tears while describing what an East Chicago, Indiana police report says her 96 year old grandmother, Ruth Reed, went through here at Harbor Health and Rehab. According to this report, taken on September 2nd, a nurse told police she witnessed a 90 year old resident with his shirt unbuttoned inside Reed's room while his hand was on her breast. Now I cannot uh, seem to trust you all with her total care. When police questioned the 90 year old male resident, he told police, I am dumb, I messed up. He told police he touched Reed's breast while she was clothed, adding she never said no or to stop. Reed has dementia. It was a shock. It, I was angry, I was mad, I was upset. Uh, and, and this shouldn't have to occur with someone that's 96 years of age. She cannot take care of herself. She can't give you authorization to touch her body. When police ran his name, they learned he's a sex offender and is currently on probation. We're not naming the man because he has yet to be arrested or charged with a crime in this case. I want this man arrested. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Reed turned 96 in August. Her granddaughter says she will not stop until she gets justice for the woman who dedicated 40 years of her life working at a dry cleaner and spent every Sunday going to church. This is enough. I can't take any more. I'm not, I'm not going to play the rest of that, but ladies, let me tell you something. Did y'all notice something about the granddaughter? She blamed the facility. She yeah. blamed the facility and not that nigga. She said she wanted him arrested, no doubt, of course. She said, I can't trust y'all with his care. Ma'am, she was attacked by a Dusty, okay? Have you ever heard on the news when the staff at some of these facilities are attacked by these Dusty motherfuckers? The staff half the time can't protect themselves from the dust. Ladies, he hasn't even been arrested. He has literally had his name protected. OK, when I told you all that black men are the most protected class, even a 96 year old victim can't even get them to put his name out here, even though they admitted, number one, he's an ex offender. And number two, he's on probation. What you doing at 90 years old on probation, bitch? Y'all, this you know is what, a mess. You, you know what the bad thing about these nursing homes, especially these days? I remember once upon a time they they would not take anybody with a criminal record. These places are so desperate. They will take anybody. They want to keep a bed filled. Melanie, go though, uh, they want, I'm going to tell you, Melanie, that it's hard to get a bed at these nursing homes. What actually happened back in 2001, you had a group of bitches that said that that was discrimination to not let elderly people with criminal records to get up in there. So the nursing homes, at least in Georgia, it's hard to get a bed because them beds are always filled. They have to duck that's what I'm saying. They want to keep beds filled. So, you know, they're they're going to sweep little crimes under the rug. They don't want nobody kicked out because they want, they want to keep them beds filled. Well, it's but by time. law, by law, they can't in, in some of these places not let them into the nurse home because of their criminal record. I'm telling you, Mammy's fault to have that shit overturned. They can't turn some of these people away, even if they're on the ex-offender list. There's no, listen, there's a lot of patients that want them beds, people that don't have criminal records. But a lot of these people are at home, on hospice, on home nursing, because they can't get a bed because people like Earl got the bed because they couldn't discriminate against Earl. Exactly. I'm sorry. They they take they taking them criminal they taking them offenders nowadays. They take they taking them in droves too. I'm sorry, but uh he not did something. It sounds like to me it's time for the Grim Reaper to stop by and pick his ass up in an Uber because if that had been my aunt, they wouldn't have to release his name. He would need burial money and I would need bail money. There's no. This is why I just don't get why they, they didn't name who the fuck he was. A similar thing happened in the UK what, two years ago with this lady with Alzheimer's, y'all. This, this, this motherfucker went in there. Oh, I almost said something. I'm sorry, DZ. This motherfucker went in the room actually assaulted this woman with Alzheimer's because he said when he got caught and I quote, well, I didn't think she would remember. Hmm. Well, and then the woman kept reliving the, it. Do I have to be the one to state the obvious that this ain't the first time he went been in there messing with that lady. It's just the first time they caught him doing it. Yep, mm -hmm. I was thinking that too. Yep. He probably been in there violating that woman. 
and one that she yeah. do about that woman almost a hundred years old. And he got his Let's... old ass in there messing around with her. And he already got a background as a sex offender. Uh, and they put him I'm sorry, ex offender. <laughs> and they thought he was gonna somehow, I guess he was so damn old he was gonna forget what he used to be or the crimes he used to commit and not do the same thing in his old age that he had already been doing. And my thing is, if you want him in there, you still don't think that the people that are in the same home with them have a responsibility uh, to know, like they don't have a right to know or be made aware because they already know if they make their presence known, most people are going to pull their folks out, right? Anybody with any sense gonna start pulling they folks out they already know that because ain't no way in hell my 96 year old mother grandmother or anything like that finna stay up in here with one of you motherfuckers that's just ain't finna happen oh i can't go ahead kyra oh i was just gonna say who wants to take does anyone think that this is his only victim in the nursing home like if they actually had an investigation no Absolutely not. I'm, I'd go so far as to say, ladies, I believe he has victims in his family. I don't know why he's on that uh, offender list, but he's he's there for a reason. OK, and a lot of these they are still protecting him. He has been committing crime. How the fuck do how, how are you on probation? How do you does your probation officer come to the, the damn nursing home? These motherfuckers are criminals to the day they die. They're dusty the day they're born and it's dust ashes to dust the day they got damn died. This is ridiculous, ladies. I just don't understand how they're going to justify this. And I I really believe he was much like that motherfucker overseas over here when he was like, well, I didn't think she would remember. Y'all, that poor lady, I'm talking about the one from in the UK. She, her daughter testified when they sentenced this motherfucker to 48 years and said that her, he thought that she would remember. But that woman relived that event every single day up until the day she closed her eyes forever. These motherfuckers don't belong anywhere. Now, if this were ancient Rome, we would be out here. It wouldn't, this wouldn't be no discussion. They would have already buried this motherfucker. He'd been gone in dust. I don't understand why they keep looking for some redemption arc with this motherfucker. These motherfuckers. There is no redemption arc. Let me tell y'all something since this was a historical uh, base live. Ladies, that man was 90 years old. Okay. Now, with back in the day with the mammies, when black men would do something, when I say back in the day, I'm talking about when we talked about uh, Tuesday, 50s, 40s, hell, 20s. Uh, when a black man would do something, his mother would say, you know, he's not right in the head. The elevator don't go all the way to the top. He's, he's slow. He disabled. Whatever he did, he didn't mean it. He, they would call him simple. He's simple, right? He knew to say that shit. That's the first thing he said when he was confronted. I'm dumb. I messed up. Uh, I, because it, it's, it's clearly not my fault because I... I don't have the intellect to attack somebody, um, you know, th that's, this shit goes way. It's really deep. Y'all it's really deep. Mammies have been protecting these niggas for a long fucking time saying that they mentally ill saying that they're intellectually challenged, all these different things. Oh, he sleepwalks. I saw that too. He he did a whole goddamn two hour R word, but he was sleepwalking while he did it. I heard a nigga's mama say that shit. Listen, I'm, I I got a cure for getting your mind right. If you um, I heard that a, when something exits the chamber of a nine millimeter, um, preferably a hollow point tip, and it goes to the head, <laughs> it splatters the brain matter, yeah. so it might scramble so your shit. Mr. Like, Roll, you gonna get us snatched up I'm out sorry. here? You know, Damn, you know, I never know what I can say up here anymore. Fuck. Look. You got you gonna make KFC seem right. They're a terrorist organization. If like, she can spell terrorist in a different <laughs> color, spell it, bitch. Spell it. Look. All right, let me pull this down from up here. We have talked a lot tonight, okay? Why am I getting emotional? Because I'm, I'm going to miss y'all. I am. I'm going to miss you. I don't know when the fuck I'm coming back here because I'm, I'm tired of the bullshit. I really am. I will be back, though. We will be back. Here's the deal, y'all. Everybody not going to be able to be saved, but you're here and you're in my earshot right now. That means that there is some hope for you if you a fence sitter, mammy, whatever. You stayed for damn near two hours to listen to this shit. But here's the deal. The bammies are getting so bad and they're so goddamn brainwashed, willing, will, willfully sometimes, that I'm not going to try to save them anymore. I'm just going to drag them. And those of you that, you know, got a little bit 
in your brain, you're going to know that's not directed towards you. It's directed towards these mammy bitches up here robbing Asian men, doing smash and grabs, hiding these criminals for these, uh, you know, hiding the dusties from the, the cops and all that shit. You know what a mammy is. I want to show y'all an example of one of these bitches that cannot be saved. Ladies, listen, she has everything, okay? She's kind of, you know, un uneducated. She's a twerker, right? She's down with the violence. She robs people. She's a social media whore. And she just comes off as a maniac, a lunatic, okay? Look at this shit and try to keep yourself together. I took Kelly train. After I got shot in the face, nigga, come get your shit, babe. Let LeBron think he the shit, the next we go and fade his crib. I ain't tripping, kick it, leave, he'll be back tonight to eat. I'm a dog with all life, punk ass look. Yeah, I got shot in my face for real, not for fake. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Just my day about to spin back for the chain. Oh, funny. Yeah, we can meet up. Oh, you want to fall? I'm dead. <laughs> Pull up on me. Pull up. This is me. I love Bye guys. Okay. Can't let y'all know too much of my little business. Man. And she laid up in a bed suctioning herself. Listen, they are sick. I will not have a conversation. I will not make any attempts. This girl got she got hit in the, with a bullet in the face. She twerking, right? She's the chain she had on her neck. She just had got finished robbing somebody. That's how she ended up getting dumped on in the face. These they're they're losing their fucking mind. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna be sitting up here with a guilt trip for for dragging these bitches. They are done and they're getting worse and worse and worse by the day. They're literally scary. Okay. Yeah. Daisy, I would like you to clarify something for the audience, if you don't mind, before we go. What's that? So you said that we're taking a break, that we're going underground. Now, are are you going to start popping up on Clubhouse every day, <laughs> running around? <laughs> no, I'm going to be behind the wall where I always am in Discord, on Patreon, and all that good stuff. But listen, no, I won't be holding any Clubhouse rooms. I'm just getting off of this rated PG-13 ass app because there's so much more that needs to be covered that can't be covered here. Okay? <laughs> Point blank, period. What's happening? Y'all have a great weekend. I am the fuck up out of here, and I love y'all so much. And I mean that shit. Have Bye. a good one. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Oh, Ebony was still here. That's what's up. She normally ain't here towards the end of the show. Look at there. Bye. Peace out. Let me pull myself from up here.